Okay, good morning. This is a meeting of the Wellfleet Housing Authority on Thursday, April 7th. Um, it is being recorded on Zoom and we have a quorum. So we will begin as usual with uh, Richard's minutes. I can screen share them. Okay, these are the minutes of our March 10th meeting. Okay. Are there any additions or corrections? If not, um, I have a motion to approve the minutes. Did you say you were moving, Elaine? Uh, I was asking for a motion. Would you oh. like to do that, Sarah? Yeah. Yeah, I surely will. Okay. Uh, second? Second. Okay, Gary, second. All in favor? Raise your hand and say aye. Aye. Okay, approved four zero. Thank you, Richard. Now I will stop the screen share. All right. Um, I put governor's appointee on. We're happy to have Janet here again this morning. I asked her if she'd heard anything from the state from her application and she has said no. Um, I think um, maybe if we don't hear anything in, a, in another couple of weeks, Janet, I'll, I'll tweak the guy at DHCD who said he would keep, his, uh, keep an eye on it and see how things are going. Great, thanks. But thank you very much for attending. All right, uh, next on the, any questions about that from anybody, including the kitty cat. Not a pretty cat and dog. <laughs> We'll always have a couple extras at my house. Yes, right. Yeah. <laughs> They're big supporters. <laughs> um, next on the agenda is rental assistance and bills. Um, any changes in our rental assistance clients? Richard? Uh, no, Elaine. I spoke with Maggie. Um, we have three clients who are current recipients. Uh, they're handling those. Uh, Maggie... Maggie has told me that she thought there would, there is a family they are trying to get in, uh, uh, get an application from to work with because they could could really use this, but that um, the, the, she's just having trouble with them um, getting getting done what what needs to be done, um, and. Uh, you know, even though we've made that a lot less cumbersome, it's a sticking point right now. So there may be somebody in the pipeline, uh, a family in the pipeline. And um, she was actually meeting this morning at nine o'clock with one of our clients for a review, but everything is pretty much status quo. Not pretty much, is status quo. Uh, and I'll, I'll keep track uh, about the, the other family with her. Okay. So Gary, do you have bills then for us to? Yes, uh, for the HPC, um, the reimbursement for April is eighteen hundred and sixty-five dollars, one eight six five. For April, right, Gary? I'm sorry, for April. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So. I would move that we approve one thousand eight hundred and sixty-five dollars for reimbursement for rental assistance to the Homeless Prevention Council. Second. Okay. I, I do have discussion, Elaine. Um, okay. I don't have a discussion about the bill per se, but at the trust meeting the other day, we were re reviewing the uh, housing accounts. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have for some time had the old housing um, the old rental assistance account that was funded by the CDBG grant and I think some other monies. And we have the um, 
emergency uh, rental assistance that was passed, I think two years ago now mm -hmm. um, for a substantial amount. And we've condensed those from a practical point of view and mm -hmm. we need to put, condense those from an accounting point of view mm -hmm. uh, and also to sign a new contract with homeless prevention. So I don't know who, who should take the initiative on that, but so it's a two, two fold process. One is to sign a new contract with HBC, consolidating mm -hmm. those two efforts. And the second is to consolidate those two uh, funding accounts. Okay, uh, I'll look back. I know that I had that email interchange with HPC, but I'm not sure about the follow-up. But that, that brings up a, a little question I had, Gary. Um, in terms of the rental assistance, the bulk of it has always come from a CPA grant. We had twice, we had some funding from the CDBG, but I, 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 it, it sounds like you were saying it all came from CB. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean to suggest that. Okay. Right. But, but the current money that we have in the quote unquote regular assistance mm -hmm. accounting mm -hmm. um, item uh, is the CDBG money. There may be some CPA money and uh, there may be some, if you recall, Elaine, I think we put some money in from the um, 2082 uh, at one point when we needed some more money. Anyway, be that as it may, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter the source of the money, but mm -hmm. rather that we, we should consolidate those. Okay. We should have one contract and we should consolidate the funding sources uh, unless we're gonna continue to pay them separately. Um, no, we don't wanna do that. <laughs> no, I, I don't think so either, so. Gary, yes. can I ask, um, under, with, with this consolidation, I, I hear what you're saying. I think it's a good idea. Uh, mm -hmm. Would this consolidation now be, come under the trust? In other words, would the trust be pay, be would the trust have the uh, contract with HPC, and would they be paying, or would they? It, it gets a little convoluted, Richard, because the town meeting vote was to give the money to the housing authority. Correct. Um, and if we wanted the, the trust to now do that, we'd either have to, I guess we could theoretically transfer the money to the trust, but also um, I think it would raise a question about the, the town meeting vote yeah. uh, being changed. So I, I think as a practice, it, it would be a nice idea, but as a practical matter, I'm not sure how that would work in terms of the, the line of, of funding. Okay, so what I guess I'm asking, Harry, is would the, uh, uh, Gary, would the Housing Authority continue to have funds under that they... That <laughs> You're they asking use? me and I'm gonna turn to Elaine. <laughs> well, we, say, we do have budget on the agenda later. So I think we'll... We'll um, gotcha. take that discussion. All I'm saying is that at maybe if we could put on the action item uh, for the next meeting is consolidation of the accounting and the contract right. for rental assistance. Right. In the meantime, have we voted on the 1800? No, no, we have it. It's been moved and seconded. We've had discussion. Um, all in favor. Please uh, raise your hand and say aye. Great, four zero, thank you. Any other bills, Gary? Uh, the CDB, CDP uh, <laughs> submitted a bill for March technical assistance in the amount of $693.75. $693.75 for March technical assistance to the CDP. Okay. I will, I will move that $693.75 to the CDP for technical assistance in March. Is there a second? Sarah? Any more discussion about that? And I just, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. No. 
what does CDBG and CDP stand? <laughs> I, I got to get these down, but what, uh, what are those? Well, the CDP is the Community Development Partnership, which okay. is located in East Ham, and we have a contract with them for part-time uh, assistance. The Community Development Block Grant is the CDBG. Okay. That's a, fund, a funding source that we occasionally are Great. able to tap into. That, that's federal money. Okay. Although it does come through the state. But. Okay. So I can look those up. I just wanted to know what they stand for. Thank you. Right. My You're apologies for talking. No, no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> if I don't know, I'll ask. Richard is working on an operetta about all these acronyms. Excellent. <laughs> or something like that. You want to hum some portion of it for us? No, Gary, <laughs> I'm trying to get, I, I'm told Elaine, I want to try to get pronunciations for all of them. Uh, so that when you stand up at a housing meeting, <laughs> instead of using the, the letters, you actually try to pronounce them as a word. Ah, I, I like that. I think we think twice about them. All right. All right. If we do that, you have to be, Gary, at the home consortium meetings. Ah, I see. You hear sentences that are just <laughs> one acronym after the next. <laughs> Okay, so we did vote on that bill, uh, 4-0. Uh, do you have others, Gary? Or do you want to uh, introduce the RISE one, Elaine, or? Yeah, why don't, why don't we do that now? It's, uh, I put buy-down uh, further on the agenda, but we do have a bill associated with the buy-down, so let's um, <coughs> do it now. Um, this is a bill for five-day road, um, which is, uh, one of our recent buy downs. This is work that um, Rise Engineering did under uh, energy audit. And um, they did uh, insulation and air sealing for that little house. Um, it was over $6,000 worth of work, um, but the portion that has to be paid um, that wasn't an incentive is $1,244.33. And this, uh, we set aside 15,000, Gary, for- I'm, I'm not, yeah, so I, well, I'm not sure yet. Let's, yeah. we can talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's, that's what we're looking at. Um, is this a, a bill we're gonna pay? Um, I, I am. I am. We are. I am introducing it as a bill to pay out of the uh, the buy down money that was set aside for uh, repairs for the for the home. Um, so does someone want to move this, and then we can discuss it? Okay, I'll move one thousand two hundred and forty four dollars and thirty three cents to be paid to Rise Engineering for uh, insulation work done at uh, our buy down house at Five Day Road. Is there a second? Second. Richard. Discussion. First, so, is, I'm is sorry, the, name, the name of the company, RISE? Mm -hmm. RISE, okay. yes. Okay, thank you. I, I don't have any problem with the work and I don't have any problem with the money. I do, I'm a little unclear as to what we think uh, this money is for. So one is, can, can Elaine, not I say now, but can you identify the, the actual date of the town meeting, this buy down in terms of the town meeting vote? Cause that's what I'll need to create an account. But when we do the buy down, we give them a grant. Mm -hmm. And if there is work that needs to be done via the home inspection mm -hmm. or as a result of the home inspection, we set that money aside, our theory being, um, you know, we don't want to burden them with costs after they buy a house that they can't afford, like, you know, a new furnace or whatever it may be, new roof. So I don't see it as a general renovation fund. Uh, and there is other money uh, available in the community for that. Um, so 
are we doing the work that was identified from the home inspection at the time? Or is this some additional work that's coming up? And my concern here is the money that, you know, it's taxpayer money, it's all of our money. I don't want to spend it needlessly or if there are other sources but the other the other issue is we could consolidate that money and help fund another buy down somewhere down the road once we get an accounting of all the buy downs that we've done and all the money we have left. Mm -hmm. well i think this is a pattern with all our other buy downs that we've given as much needed and tried to save some aside for um important things that were identified. I mean, we have, um, we do sort of, we have a list from Ann Robinson, who's monitoring this for us. And it certainly, I think we all saw that house. It, potential big ones are the roof and the heating system. And then there are a bunch of other smaller items. Um, to me, insulating the house, um, most of it was covered. Um, there's the potential for the rehab grant, which was applied for, but they haven't found out yet if that can happen. Um, so if we do pay this bill, I think the only other thing we're looking at is either a roof or a heating system based on what the rehab grant might provide. Um, So I think I think it fits into the our overall pattern of doing this and, and trying to make sure the house is, you know, as as livable as possible. Um, but I, I do think we didn't have quite maybe as clear a list as we may have had in the past. But you know, uh, we we did get an accounting from Anne of all the things that are needed. Um, right. I'm not saying work isn't uh -huh. needed, um, right. but the question is, when we did the buy down, usually we, we escrow that money for specific purpose, like the roof or the heating system or whatever it may well, be. Well, I mean, we've, escrowed, that, we've escrowed it for repairs and in well, the past. Some have come a year or more afterwards. Again, I'm not questioning the timing. I'm not mm -hmm. questioning actually doing the installation and the rise people are the, you know, the the energy people and 1,244 is outrageous for the work. Only that if in fact they have uh, access to um, other loans, you know, the, the renovation loans, I'd much rather wait before any other work unless it was um, emergency uh, and see if they get that and if they can apply that to these various items and then we can apply this money to somebody else? Uh, we are certainly waiting to hear if they get the rehab grant, but um, I think there's been a little confusion because of a language barrier with, with um, this client. Um, this bill, which apparently is, he can't pay is four months overdue. Um, Again, I don't I'm not saying that's why I'm not saying that's why we should pay it, but no, I think sorry. we if I would like to see us pay this one, and then we will definitely hold off. Yeah, if we could communicate that, right? Definitely. We, right, I would I would certainly support that, Elaine. Is let's pay this bill regardless of the the discussion behind it, and but going forward, let's n agree that we're not going to pay any others. Uh, until we get clar clarity on both, is it part of the uh, home inspection escrow and is it not covered by the a um, redevelopment? Uh, right, there were- Renovation I, grants, yeah. excuse me. Yeah, I think there's probably a whole list of what potentially should and could be covered by the rehab grant and I'll, I'll get that information. Right. And I, I saw the list that Ann had sent. It was sort of a general list of these are the renovations we'd like to do, but I'm not sure they're in the take care of this as part of the buy down. Uh, right. No, I would I would say, you know, the roof or the heating system are probably, but if if some other things get it get covered, we can discuss that further. Okay. Great. Right. 
Yeah, but I would, I would, uh, I would like to help them. Yes. Clear no, up I, again, I don't have any problem with with this, uh, Elaine. We will have to figure out a way to create an account. To, right. You need the town vote. meeting. That's why, I, that's why I need that um, town meeting vote that applies to this particular house. Yeah. Okay. All right. Are you speaking with the. Are you speaking with the daughter on Day Road because she. Um, she helped so enormously during the purchase with the language barrier and she was great about always getting back, you know. I right. think that's I think that's the really the person doing this. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so you're all connected that way though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean we're we're counting on Anne as our administrator to keep this all on track. Okay, so it has been moved and seconded. Um, we've had discussion. Um, all in favor, please raise your hand and say aye. 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 Any opposed? Four I'm zero. Gonna, I'm going to abstain for the sake okay. of one, right. one abstention. One abstention. Thank you. Look. Okay. No other bills. No other bills. Thank you very much. Okay, the next acronym, acronym on our agenda, I have no idea what it stands for. <laughs> But we did um, we did um, make an application through the town to the Cape Cod Commission for a DLTA grant to do a new housing plan, and we did receive the town will receive twenty five thousand dollars to um, fund this. Um, the request was for a housing production plan, which is a little bit different than our other plans that we've done um, in terms of the follow-up for it. Um, but it basically is a needs assessment and a production plan that then you follow up showing how much you have produced. And um, it's kind of a quick turnaround. This has to be, the money has to be spent and the work done by the end of the year. So we do have, um, we do have a scope of work that was actually developed by the commission for this and it looks good. I can, I can send that to you in an email. And I'm gonna meet with um, Rebecca roughly next week to talk about getting out the um, scope of work to consultants. And uh, then I would hope that the consultant would help us put together uh, a way to go forward that maybe is involving some other of our committees in town that haven't been directly involved before. I'd love to see representatives like from the planning board, from the COA, from the school, maybe be part of the working group that um, helps put this together and with a healthy dose of uh, community engagement. Um, so uh, we talked about it at the trust and uh, talked about, you know, who would be leading the charge on this. And um, I did offer to do that. <laughs> so, um, once again, it would involve all three of our groups, but hopefully a, a wider representation from the town too. So I don't know if you have any questions about that. Um, Janet, our old plan was uh, finished in 2017. Uh, it's a couple of hundred pages long. Um, you can access it from the town website if you put in uh, housing needs assessment, I believe, or I can send it to you. But it, you know, we have new census data, we have new potential funding sources are supposedly, um, you know, our population increased by 27%. So there are reasons to be looking at our needs and what can be done again. Thank you. Elaine, do we have yes. a list of potential uh, consultants, either from MHP or Chapman? I, I I did ask Laura, I let Laura know that we got the grant and I asked her, I haven't heard back from her. So I'm gonna tweak her again. I know of three um, 
people. Uh, one in particular, I'd be very interested in. Um, but I did also ask um, Becky to ask the commission if they have people that do this. But I do hope it's a quick turnaround time. I hope people will be available to, to, to hey, get this. Done. I think um, the timing of it in general is interesting because some of the work will be done during the summer. And I think it would be interesting to engage, you know, uh, some of our seasonal people in the discussions and the learning experience. Any more questions or responses to that? Okay. I put housing budget on next. Um, we're trying to develop a framework, which we still have to wait for accounting to kind of finish up. But um, Richard, to your point, asking about uh, the housing authority, the trust, the discussion we had at our meeting on Monday was pretty much that ideally most of the funding will be steered towards the trust, but right now we have programs that the housing authority has traditionally done for years and until those are expended and we have to look at asking for new monies for them, uh, my understanding that I took away was that the housing authority would continue to do what we've done until we expend the money we have for our current programs. And then we would discuss further how the trust might become okay. the responsibility uh, for that. Am I unmuted? Yes. Um, I haven't given this too much thought, but I think Elaine, um, insofar as the trust is um, looking at housing production mm -hmm. and so to speak, systemic change around here in terms of how housing works, it makes absolute sense that you know the the money go the money goes there. I do think that, Traditionally, uh, I, we, we have had a role where it's not so much been production, but the assistance role, the, the, help, the help role that the housing authority has done, which um, basically rental assistance and you know, the emergency rental assistance um, <clears throat> that, um, that I was thinking about and specifically that that would somehow continue be, to be funded through the housing authority. And that's not, the money and the amounts that the trust is talking about for, for other larger projects of purchases and production. So that's all I was thinking of the, uh, the, the, the help side of things as opposed to the fix side of things. That may be oversimplistic, but I think you get my, my sense. That's all. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, we have the, the housing authority has been responsible for um, looking for land and, and shepherding our, our uh, requests for proposals for developers through. And that's a big chunk of our work that will definitely pass over to the trust. Sure. Um, but um, Gary? Uh, I, I just uh, one question or note about um, Freeman Ave. So we're getting ready to issue the, the RFP for Freeman Ave uh, for the construction of a single house. That's a lot of, of land that we got Janet, from the town. Um, but we had talked about transferring it to the trust, but uh, because the town meeting vote was to the uh, housing authority, we may still need to do that as opposed to transferring it to the to the trust and that should be issued in the next couple of months or so right yeah i mean in essence the things we have been doing we're going to finish them <laughs> and then when it comes time to say 
Do we want to ask for more rental assistance money? Do we want to ask for another buy down? Those, especially those programs, that's when we'll really kind of have to decide how we want to go about doing that. Right. So Richard, the buy, buy down application we made for uh, CPA money for that'll be on the town meeting either in the spring or the fall um, is for money to go to the housing authority to manage that, that buy down. Uh, next time, perhaps we will change that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, we're gonna, it's gonna be in pieces, step by step. But do you see eventually all of these things going into the trust? I think that's where we're headed and where it's probably a good idea to be headed since the trust is actually a, via, a committee of the town, whereas the housing authority is really a state agency. And so the support for the trust is kind of more direct through town, town council, things like that. Um, All of the donations go to the trust which after uh, we made the change from the old trust to the new trust. Right. Um, so theoretically all the money in the last year and a half should have gone to the new trust. Okay, thanks for clarifying that. And I think once we have clarification through accounting, it will help greatly to see where well, we are. God knows we I've certainly been longing for that for a long, long time. Has anybody met our new accountant? No? Okay. All right. Um, anything more on the budget? In terms of town meeting, um, there are two issues that affect housing uh, new ones we haven't discussed that um, both that ryan curley as a select board chair have brought forward um, one about college colonies and allowing them to be year-round and the community impact fee um, we don't know if they're going to be on the town meeting coming up in june or we hear there's going to be another town meeting September, don't know when, but um, we did um, we did discuss them at the trust and I want to make sure people are aware and we can we couldn't even vote today um, at the trust we we voted sort of a Uh, agreement with the concept, maybe not necessarily the actual information right now. Um, the cottage colony one. Oops, no, it's not, it's not sharing. Let's go away. Where did? All right, let's put college colonies. <laughs> well, let's... <laughs> okay, this is an amendment to our college colony zoning bylaw, which <laughs> Come on, move up. Adios, Elaine. Adios. Um, this is basically striking that occupied on a seasonal basis only and allow them when they can to be occupied year round. Can I, 
Can I ask Sarah a question with regard to this, Elaine? Um, yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Elaine, uh, I mean, Sarah, uh, there were two discussions. One is that, um, will it actually produce any affordable year round housing mm -hmm. as opposed to, uh, um, not just be, but as opposed to being a windfall in the increase in the value? So this has been something that I've been, um, was one of my thoughts, even when I, you know, for many, many years, I guess, was that this would be a really sensible, smart thing to do um, for specific cottage colonies in town. But what you don't want to do, or my concern would be exactly what you just said, Gary, what if all of a sudden the values just rise so much that then all of these little cottages can be occupied year round, but nobody year round can afford them again, you know what I mean? And we've created this other problem. Um, so I think what I would like to see, and I don't even know whether it's possible, but I haven't, I'm just reading this now. Um, and I did think about reaching out to Ryan also because he's been doing so much, um, which is great. But um, is there a way to change this bylaw so that it says they can be occupied year round if they're being occupied by year round residents. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I'm not a lawyer, but second homeowners versus year round people, that's not a fair housing issue. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, I, you know, so I guess that would be my thought is if there's a way to do this and say they can be occupied year round if they're being used by year round people, I think would be fabulous. Does that answer your question a little? Yeah, no, it, you're addressing the same concern I, I have with it yeah. is, um, you know, does it, will it, will it have the in, intended effect right. of making more, more year round affordable, even if it's a small A affordable? Right, um, because, but, right, exactly. It's, yes, small A affordable. But if they, these cottages that are right now selling for 320,000 and they're seasonal, become year round and then they start selling for 500,000 or whatever. Yeah, now, yeah. I would say that Truro made this change and I believe what they do is they allow cottage colonies to go individually for approval for year round use. And there hasn't been a big like huge immediate upswing in market value that I've, at least not, not that I've studied it, but not that I've seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I just interject? I live near the Surfside Colony, which mm -hmm. just, they all just went up for sale. I was, mm -hmm. and as I understand it, they are currently saying seasonal only. The prices are unbelievable. Yeah. They're, they're like 800000 for yeah. a little box. Um, so I just wonder how, I mean, people that buy those now, if this goes through, that would change those ones, right? I don't, I mean, you're saying, would the bylaw then allow those um, to be occupied year round? Yeah. I haven't studied this language, but it sounded like that well, that's the proposal, Elaine, just to allow all cottage colonies to be occupied year round. Um, well, I, I think that's what this is saying. Um, in our discussion at the trust, it came up that a cottage colony most of them would have to vote to allow that. Yep, yep, yep. yep. And, and we did also talk that none of the cottage colonies that have a water view will end up producing an affordable. It's right, it, they're, not, they're not affordable already for right. year round people. We yeah. talk, talked about some other places, Greenhaven, which I think is on Route 6, uh, Brown's Cottages, where there, there are other cottage colonies that might mm -hmm. produce. I've always something. thought that Deck 2 would be a wonderful place to be year round. Deck 2? Mm. Right. Deck 2 would be wonderful. They're nice. They're large enough. I mean, there'd have to be insulation underneath and stuff like that. But I've always thought the size is right. The parking is good. The price is affordable. You have access to the back roads. I mean, I've always thought deck two would make wonderful year round. Those would be great. Yeah. Would be great. But, but I sort of agree with you across the board. Um, 
you know, I don't know what would happen to those ones down by you, Janet, because I have to agree, those are very, uh, one of them has already gone under agreement. Yeah. And, uh, but, just as a, uh, yeah. those have been actually been condominiumized. Condom yeah. I don't think they're actually a cottage colony anymore. Oh. Oh, so maybe, actually, that's interesting because. Huh. I'm, I'm not sure, Sarah. I, I, I see them advertised as condominiums. They might just oh. be in process. I can't remember what the MLS listing sheet said, but you bring up an interesting point, Gary, because most of what were traditionally cottage colonies are now condominiums, actually. Um, you know, so I wonder how that's addressed in here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like most right. of them already it, are under individual ownership, not single ownership. It's it's not. Can you scroll down a little bit, Elaine, to the to the yeah, right there. You know, uh, Sarah, one thing we could do is to now the proposal is to authorize them in in all zoning districts. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we if it would make sense to restrict it in some way. Yeah, or allow the town to be. I mean, I don't know, because then you're setting. If you set the precedent. All right. I think it's worth asking all of these questions. And, and, you know, like I said, when I saw that Ryan was doing this, I started drafting an email, which I never got out to him, just sort of saying, I'd love to talk about some of these things, you know what I mean? Um, and not to say that I have some um, valuable perspective, just to say that it's something I've been thinking about for 20 years, you know what I mean? Um, so uh, Elaine, rather than our, I, I don't know that we need to vote on it today, since we don't even know when it's going to be on the town warrant, but I would certainly be in favor. Sarah's by far the most knowledgeable about this. And if you're willing, Sarah, is maybe approach Ryan. And mm -hmm. my understanding is that this has been approved by the select board okay. and sent to the planning board. Mm -hmm. Okay. And right. I don't know that the planning board has done anything with it. Yeah. I mean, um, I would be, I would be happy, Sarah, if you, yeah contact Ryan even say on behalf of the housing authority you, yes. these, these we're were happy. questions we had right. sure. we're happy I to authorize you if that makes sense yeah absolutely I I would I would love to have this conversation I think it's an important one and I think it could be done in a way that might really help us you know mm -hmm. yeah because I, I saw on a listing that one of the brownies uh, just sold for like three hundred and twelve thousand dollars and that's affordable, you know. Right, but that's not year round. No, but if it could have been. Right, but what would be the, pri yeah. that's the, the question is what yeah. we. Yeah, and, and does that mean all these colonies would quick want to condominiumize so they wouldn't be under this? You know, it's a lot of questions, but. Um, but Elaine, isn't, but isn't the essential question all you guys are asking is how does this improve the situation as opposed to exacerbating an already not good situation. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think it could if it, I think it, it could potentially, you know what I mean? But it is, and, and the, the, the distinction between cottage colony and condominium is an important one because really there's almost no cottage colonies left. They're all condominiums already. And I think they're trying to address I guess maybe they still fall under cottage colony for zoning purposes. Is that a question you would ask Sarah or? Yeah, it is actually, you know, and I had actually been to the new building inspector a couple times this spring to ask these questions on behalf of somebody that was purchasing something that was technically um, seasonal, but all of the units in this one place are being occupied year round and nobody's, saying anything you know mm -hmm. but it's well you know that's also uh you know it would be nice if that was legal right mm -hmm. right there yeah. are, in theory don't they turn off the water out of season it depends it depends it's it's really strange gary i mean it depends on the complex because some of them also have written in these things that say um, they're seasonal, they can only be occupied from, you know, April 1st to November 30th, but you're also allowed to use them on school holidays, things mm -hmm. like that. Then you have some that are 
year round because they were traditionally year round or multifamily homes and those are okay. And then you have some where each people have separate water lines and they're responsible for shutting down their own and others where they do it as a group. So it, there really is sort of a, a swath of things I would say that are not all consistent. Well, I, I think we would welcome Sarah if you, yes. if you put all that down and send it along and yeah, I'd be we'll, happy to. We'll see what happens. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. The other one <clears throat> that I might agree with Gary that we don't, although this is about funding, so we might want to take this up in case it comes on a town meeting. Um, this is another proposal that Ryan did. There's um, there is an additional fee that the town can charge to um, short-term rentals. Um, and it's called a community impact fee. It can be up to 1%. Um, Ryan presented it to the select board at 3%, but they voted to send it forward as a 1% impact fee. And um, it wasn't clear whether they voted that if this went through, all of it would go to affordable housing. The, the law is that at least 35% of it has to go to affordable housing. Um, Gary, you wanna add anything about this one? Uh, our discussion? Only that Elaine, um, <clears throat> at our last uh, CDP meeting, our last meeting with community development partners is about technical mm -hmm. support. We mm -hmm. asked them to look at what other towns are doing, uh, mm -hmm. both in terms of, and there's actually was an article in the Independent this week. Uh, oh. Um, but the question is, are other towns doing 1%, 3% not doing this? Mm -hmm. and, and the second part of it is, if it's one or 3% of $100, not really a big deal. If it's one or 3% of Five hundred thousand uh, dollars, then it's a significant enough issue for us to to have an have an opinion of. So we don't have a, a sizing of it of what what the income would be. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to to know whether to advocate for the three or just let it go for the one. And I think the thinking, and it, I think it was mostly uh, Mike who. Um, thought uh, we should do it at one and not 3%. Mm -hmm. um, remember, this is only for investors. These are people who own more than one home that they're renting out on a short-term basis. Right. Um, so do we have an opinion, do we have enough information to have an opinion mm -hmm. regarding whether it should be one or 3%? Right, Sarah, do you have any take on this? I, I don't really, to be honest. I mean, maybe I should. I know people complain about the fees that we have already, but they still rent here. You know, I, I, I mean, I think anything that we can do that's going to help us sort of, you know, balance out our seasonal and our year round housing, you know, would be great. But I, I, I just don't have a strong opinion. I'm sorry to you guys. Um, I think I think we can certainly wait on this. I think it's important to know what's out there and what's being discussed. Um, and if it is on this year's town meeting, we still have time for uh, two other meetings, and we can also make our a recommendation at town meeting. Elaine, do you want to send a, a reminder to Andrea about that request, or do you want me to? Yeah, why don't you send her? That would be great. And. I'm so sorry, you guys, and I'm sorry to jump in. I should have said this at the beginning, but I have an 11 a.m. that I tried to push and I couldn't, so I'm going to have to pop out here. Okay, we. I think we have gotten through the the real okay. um, the real uh, substantive part of our agenda. So, okay. Um, so Could I just interject one thing, Sarah? Yeah. Um, the partnership is looking at uh, multifamily zoning changes mm -hmm. and whether that would actually produce any. Um, affordable homes. If we could call on you to get some expertise on that, that'd be great. I would love that. Great. Okay. 
Thank you. Jan, Jan Morrissey, who's our representative from the um, Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah, tell her, please. I would love to talk to her. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. We'll put, we'll put, okay. we'll put multifamily on the agenda next time. Thank okay. you. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. Sorry, guys. I apologize. Nice. Thank Bye. you, Sarah. See you soon. Yep. Bye. Okay. We still have a, a quorum. Um, I have ADU next on the agenda. I don't, I don't really have anything right now. Gary, do you? No, we did. I did get an email from Ann about um, administering the ADU uh, program, but we don't have the program in place yet. So I'll, I'll forward that to you. Okay. And uh, next on the website, the website is waiting till I return to straighten out uh, our new website until I straighten out a few things with Barbara Woodbury, who has been the volunteer who has created the new website for us. Um, Updates um, for 95. On, on the website, um, I just want to add that the partnership is uh, considering, uh, you know, we have our summer fundraising effort, uh, Housing Angels, and uh, I think it's August 7th. Um, okay. But anyway, the, we're now thinking of uh, doing some online auction with the ability to bid on, bid on it uh, in a simplified manner uh, on the website. So two, two things on that is, um, if you have anything like a, a rental or some neat thing that you have that you might like to put up for auction, uh, let us know. But when you talk to Barbara, could you, uh, uh, Elaine, just uh, confirm we can do that when you come back? Nothing urgent. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, in terms of updates for 95 Lawrence Road, there is um, POA and CDP created a new timeline for Lawrence Road and that's up on the town website. Um, and they've, they've, they've certainly put the timeline with the best possible scenario of all things falling into place, which I think that Final result of that is people moving in in 2025. Uh, but take a look at that. Um, let me just look it up real quick. It's under news, it's one of the first items. <clears throat> I can send that to everybody too, but um, just kind of let you know. Um, they did submit um, a project eligibility letter, which is a major step. And once they hear that is approved, um, they will submit an application to the ZBA in June. Um, they will also start doing some outreach to the community. Um, their application for funding would go in in January, 2023. Construction would begin in December, 2023 and would be completed and people would move in in 2025. Uh, that's, that's all based on getting funding the first year, which we've heard traditionally, you don't get it until your second attempt. So we're looking at uh, 2025 or 2026 for Lawrence Road to be up and serving people in the community. So. Um, Elaine, I liked your idea of having the developer submit a request for funding to the town, whether it be CPA or, or whatever it is. So yeah. I certainly support that, but I don't know when they were, th are they thinking of the uh, summer slash fall CPA round of this year or next year? We're gonna talk next week. So right, we'll if they could, if it, you could clarify that for us, mm -hmm. that'd be yep. great. For sure. Yep. Um, and as Gary said, the, 
the RFP for the one lot on Freeman Ave. Hopefully we'll be going out very soon. Um, is that the part of Freeman Ave where there is no housing right now or is it the part where there are houses? It's, it's, um, there. Would you describe where it is? It, yeah. do, do you know where Tr Tr Crescent Neck yeah. is? And it, there is, there is a lot right there. Uh, about one lot in from Chequesset. Okay. That's on Freeman. It's actually a part of Freeman that's a sand road, uh, but will be paved. Okay. Um, where it turns. Where it, where yes. it, exactly right. Past, um, past the marsh where it bends around. Where it yep, bends yep, around. yep, yep, yep. Yeah, okay, right I got there. it. Yep, great. Great. Yeah. Thank you. You know, uh, Janet, we've done this for other people. Um, at some point, we can take you on a tour of our properties where they are and great well yeah. that one is like a neighbor to me so that would i just wasn't sure what part of freeman because it's sort of in two parts but i'm right on the summit so that one i know yep. yeah mm -hmm. thank but thank you mm -hmm. yep um there are there's a workshop coming up tomorrow which i really wish i could go to but i'm traveling but they will record it but it's about land use history on the cape and a lot about how you know the land use of single family homes what has created the situation we have and about fair housing laws and uh, you know very very deep background on how we got to our current situation and why we need to do something about it um, and and then next Tuesday I think is what's called the Outer Cape Peer Group meeting I don't know if you all got that announcement from the CDP. But um, I can forward that to you, Janet, if you're interested. It's where all um, the outer Cape towns get together on Zoom. And usually there's a presentation on some topic and then everybody talks about what they're doing and shares ideas. Um, so those are always worthwhile. Elaine, can you send us the links for those? I suspect I got them, but I think they're lost in the... Okay, I will do that. In the email. Both of them. I will have to send them in two separate emails, I'm sure. Thank you. And that's what I have. Any other topics for our next meeting? Uh, we have the Homeless Prevention Council contract and consolidating funds. We have multifamily housing. We have... Uh, Anything else off the top of anybody's head at the moment? The next meeting is going to be the first Thursday in May at 10 a.m., probably still on Zoom. I know the town had said you can do virtual meetings up until a certain point. I don't know if the new variant will allow this to go on longer, but we'll find out. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, Elaine. Thanks, Gary. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Thanks, Janet, and safe. Thank you very much. Travels. Welcome, Janet. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye.